it is a bizarre profession, and, <laughs> and, it, and it really attracts some of the strangest and most yeah. misfit type people, you know, who don't belong in other forms. <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs>
who is an amazing producer, has done some incredible stuff, you know, last couple of years in particular, but for a while. And um, after talking to Barry, uh, met with Adela, and um, you know, decided to do this thing together. And A24 was the company that came forward. A24 has been a distributor and acquirer of movies, but they wanted to get into the production business. Nice. And so there was an opportunity, opportunistic situation, I guess, where they, they, it, 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 it was something that they wanted to do on the business side, but they also were extremely passionate partners. And they were, they really were incredibly um, supportive of the movie. And they funded the whole thing. They financed, they fully financed the movie. And, Fantastic. And, and they didn't sell far. And, and, and it was, it was a, we believe in this. Um, we believe in Barry. You guys go make this movie. And um, it makes it so much. It's, it, wow, it makes yeah. life so so wonderful having one stop shopping, having one yeah. financier. Yeah. Well, there wasn't there wasn't a climate of of trauma or like or like that thing of like ah uh, like you know, I guess you uh, all right like go do your thing. But you know like this this veil. You didn't have to report back all the time. Well, were you were you free enough to? To it was totally free environment, and I think and I think. Um, Look, it's hard to get movies out into the marketplace and release them, and spend. You know, it's incredibly expensive and 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 difficult. And and they they just they were confident in what we were doing. They were great partners. And and in here in the UK, um, Altitude is going to release the movie, and th really excited about them as well. But like A24 in the process were were wonderful. And um, you know, it was it was like, what does the movie need? Oh, you want to shoot in Miami? There's no tax credit in Miami, so. The, the conventional wisdom would have been, you know, can't you find it in Georgia? Can't you find it in yeah. Atlanta? And, and, th and that would be, <laughs> but they, they were smart enough to understand, A, that there was something about the creative affinity that the director had from being from that part of the world. And then that that became what I think people have noticed about the film was that it was, it was a person, Terrell Alvin McCraney and Barry Jenkins telling the story of this place so that was, a, that was a combination of creative support and I think business savvy on their part. Yeah, but also when it's not a huge budget, you, you know, you actually have a lot more freedom. I mean, that's what I found yeah. uh, on the films that I've done with Ken. We purposefully never do films yeah. over say $5 million, even, you know, even right. if it's a bigger thing. Is that, is that your number? Is that the number? Yeah, that I think that's about the, the most we've spent on a film. Right, because um, that, that's some kind of, da you feel the danger zone. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's, it's like when you go over a certain level, you start not knowing the names of the people who you're working with, and you start to, you, you know, you don't know the crew, you don't know the cast, and, and I think you can hold it all in your head, um, a project if it's if it's of a certain scale and you you're all working everybody on it is working on that project they're not flitting in and out that yeah. was one of the problems mm. I found working in LA yeah. was the fact that it's it's just it's, it's industrial just filmmaking yeah. Yeah. And, and when you hire somebody they might just disappear the next week because they got a better offer well we cast our crew just as much as we cast the cast and yeah. everybody's got to be Shows. on that project mm -hmm. and so that's what i like about working on the lower lower budget films and you you know the story becomes you you own it more and the research that we do feeds into everybody who's working on the project and that's important to us I, I, so, yeah, sorry, sorry, no, no, go ahead. it just makes such a big difference because yeah. on under the shadow we were such a small tight crew you know we brought over people from the uk but you know our dp and sort of few heads of departments and everybody else was from jordan and they were working you know they didn't know us beforehand but really just like dove into the film and gave it everything and it was such a family atmosphere and you get to know people so well and it, I, it makes I agree. the biggest difference it's like this intangible thing that somehow feeds into the filmmaking we're all in one house you know, all living, all living really close together and seeing it's each other. It's a very dangerous constantly. house to live in. <laughs> <laughs> Rockets come through the roof. I know that. <laughs> no, it's true, yeah. no I, it's the same like same thing here with with denial. It was a l slightly larger budget. We did it for a little over eleven million dollars, but our crew and our cast, everyone was working way below mm. what they normally would make. Yeah because they loved what the movie spoke to. They, they, they bought into what it was about. And um, 
And it's funny, it's one of the first times uh, where crew didn't leave us with about a week or two to go um, looking for their next jobs. They, yeah. they were there all the way yeah. to the end. And, and it is something that tends to happen a lot in the States yeah. is that they start moving on to their next show. I just, I couldn't understand yeah. it because, you know, we'd carefully chosen these people and suddenly they just went. I just yeah. I didn't understand that. It, it's hard. I mean, it's, it's, it's competitive and, and there's great, there's competition for, for that talent. I think, I think, yeah, that you, you know, you have to, that you have to have a piece of material that is strong enough that somehow it, it, it either draws out or creates some kind of non-biological family, mm. you know, yeah. and in, in the case of Moonlight, Barry's two editors, Nat Sanders and Joy McMillan, are Florida State University with Barry. His uh, DP, James Laxton, is his longtime close friend and FSU also, and Adela, his producer, my partner on the film, our partner, also went to Florida State University, so he was bringing uh, with yeah. him a family, um, yeah. you know, that he had been working with all those years. Yeah, and there are so many, when you have that group, there are, you know, when you've got a, a long-standing bunch of folk that you work with, yeah. there are so many conversations you don't have to have, and then so you can put your energy into telling the story as well as possible, so yeah. you know how each other's going to work on the project, you yeah. know what, uh, you know, what, what the strengths and weaknesses mm. are of everybody, and I mean, we've we've been cheating. We've been working with more or less the same crew for yeah. for twenty years, and and actually, it it makes such a difference because you can hit, hit the ground running. You're not yeah. sort of testing out new people's abilities and things. And I mean, that you can. The danger is that you relax into into it too much. But that's where the story and and also the cast will be different that's what what where they are bringing the freshness to right to the process yeah i know as we were saying i i don't most of the films that i've i've produced um it's been a new group every time and you know work. it's hard work but there's something exciting about new energy new ideas at the same time although i i think it would be I think it would oh, be fascinating luxury. to it's do, you know, year after year with a core group. I always say we're the first one on, the last one off. Mm -hmm. We turn the lights out at the end of the mm -hmm. day. And uh, that time we spend with the distributors figuring out the marketing strategies mm -hmm. and the PR strategies are crucial because you're supporting your filmmakers and they put so much into it. And if you don't give them an opportunity to open a door to the world, then what the heck were you doing in the first place? There is also a lot of like false ideological like d dialogue in, I think certainly in Los Angeles about what and what and who the audience is for things. Mm -hmm. Same here. And, and, yeah. what, and, and what an audience will or won't like or embrace. And I think, um, I think uh, our company, um, Brad and my partner Didi and I were I think we're we are often drawn to projects that might be a test case that demonstrate that there is in fact an audience for things that that the conventional opinion would be that there isn't one for. Yeah. So I think in the case of Moonlight um, there was you know because of certain taboos in the story I think there was a there was a a, a kind of counterpoint perspective that it could not and would not find an audience. And, and I think when you have a chance to like address those questions of where, where an audience may or may not be, that, that adds a level of excitement to the project. Um, and I think it's nice that, you know, I think movies often demonstrate new audiences or audience combinations that, that weren't necessarily evident. And behind those, other movies can come in and, and the marketplace can become more diverse and more interesting. Yeah. I agree. I mean, with, with us, we, we were making a Farsi language psychological horror movie <laughs> with Obvi a first time filmmaker and like everybody was like, you know, this main character of yours, she's really not very likable. We think you sit between two stools. It's like it starts out like a social drama. Do you, do you mean she's not likable because she's having honest feelings about yes, her? Yes, absolutely. And, and, and absolutely. It's because she's complex. She's, I mean, she's not a very nice mother, really. I mean, she's yeah. a difficult mother. She doesn't know whether she wants to be a mother. You know, a lot of these questions that you, yeah. I mean, you don't often see characters like that on screen in situations where you're asking and audiences to 
you know, invest beyond a certain level. Yeah. Um, but she's a perfect and, horror victim. Exactly. You know, of, she's of great herself. because you, you know, yeah. your your um, your feelings are um, ambivalent about her. Yeah. Um, but I mean, one of the things that that we wanted to do with I Daniel Blake was that we wanted to take it beyond the mainstream art house yeah. audience that would that would normally see our films and we persuaded our distributors here to um, how to let us have community screenings in the bit between the op the main release of the film and before it comes out on DVD which is <coughs> in a couple of weeks time um, we we've made it available and they came on board with this they've made it available to community groups to mm. rent the film for a low price and use it as a fundraiser and all those things. And they've done like 400 of these community screenings so far. And so a whole different audience has now seen the film that would never have, have seen it. And it's, it's, it's been a fantastic experiment bringing it to that's people amazing. that are the people who are that's, in the film. That's great. But that's why we do these things. I mean, we did the same thing with communities uh, across America and, and they, we've done it here as well. The, the challenge that I've found is that um, there are certain films that audiences would rather wait and watch at home versus going to the to yeah. the theater, and and I think part of you know part of the work we have to do um, is is ex, you know is explain why the theater experience is worthwhile no matter what the subject matter is, um, and I think that I think moving forward that. That really is the key challenge for some of these independent distributors like A24 and yeah. Bleaker and, and the companies we work with because I think majority of their money is coming in after the theatrical release in most cases. Yeah, although you know, in my case, I feel I could I felt we had you know, not this is not contrary to what you're saying. It's in support of it. You know, A A24 really you know made the film an event, a theatrical event in the places where it was originally opening and and I could and they a lot of screening and screening and screening and and doing different kinds of outreach and and partnering up with different organizations um, just did an event with uh, Barack Obama's my brother's keeper um, you know continuing to like as you say make a film a, some kind of cultural event yeah. as opposed to the yeah. by default one is automatically going to go to a cinema and see it because maybe that corresponds to a, you know an era with fewer television shows, fewer mm -hmm. options generally. Yeah, I think the the the, um, the more as a producer you can persuade a distributor to be original, different, reach out to you know experimental, then the more you've succeeded in a way. As and a and it's that yeah. choice. That's a you know the key choice of who is that distributor, yeah. and do they have the ability uh, and the desire to think outside the box? I think that casting is hugely important. Yes, and I think for, it's been interesting with I Daniel Blake because in some some countries it's worked really really well, where the distributor has taken that on board, has taken on board the fact that well, look this is about an ordinary bloke, who I mean there's really nothing sexy about the film at all. And you know how do you make that work? And you 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 tell you you show people this this is right. your story. Right. This, this is a, familiar. The apparent liability is the advantage. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah, Altitude here. Will Clark and his team at Altitude were very clear uh, about Moonlight from the from the jump, and they they always saw that those those so called tricky things uh, as being the the exact exactly. strength that you would yeah. sell, sell exactly. to. So you guys open in a couple weeks? Yeah, uh, I guess next weekend after some uh, preview stuff this weekend. And have they been doing screenings for? Yeah, the, yeah, no, we've been here. Community? This is uh, uh, this is like the third time now. Um, awesome. We were at we were at the uh, London Film Festival actually, and it's been I mean uh, it's been wonderful to see a story about you know a kid from Liberty City, Florida, where where Terrell McCraney and Barry is from, yeah. you know having a, an, a, a very specific neighborhood, very specific experience, and having people um, from the UK or even from you know South America. Or there were these Korean posters that were I just saw online. A Korean artists did poster hand drawings of of each of the three characters 
in this incredibly beautiful. I love it when different people start to own, yeah. <laughs> own the film. <laughs> the idea that people see themselves yeah. in, in yeah, the character so of, Sh of, of Chiron, you know, like, yeah. like, you know, where they feel like they are him, you know, although they might have. But it's nothing. great because because the wonderful thing about Moon Moonlight is you've got three different versions of him. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, yeah. anybody could be Chiron. Yeah. Well, <laughs> unfortunately, with our film, you know, we've now been told in the last week that on college campuses around the uh, around the UK there are Holocaust deniers distributing um, pamphlets yeah, really? um, referencing the film and David Irving and uh, the fallacy of uh, you know of the court case and the, and the verdict. I mean, and, it's and, yeah. sorry, and that and that that is an uptick from pri like like it's well, a, there's been an uptick right, around sure. the world of anyway, course, of course. but. Um, you know, the film op opened here three weeks ago. Oh, and I see. These so the, flyer, film, the these film has brought out that... that um... And Irving, who of course we never uh, had any contact with and, and, and won't, um, he's now given interviews for the first time in a number of years in papers here and, and is fueling it. I feel there's so many different versions of, of strong producing. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think I could sort of feel like there's everyone has a different style, different yeah. skills. Yeah. Um, I think it's a it is a bizarre profession, and, <laughs> and it and it yeah. really attracts some of the strangest and most yeah. misfit type people, you know, who don't belong in other <laughs> forms of work. Yeah, and and I feel you know I don't even know what <laughs> it is. Speak for yourself. <laughs> like Sorry, this is not I, this is to be my therapist. Um, people, people who aren't particularly good at anything. But quite. But can lost. touch everything and yeah. can have you know. Yeah, I mean, we really are disastrous in terms of being human beings. But we're the unifiers, right? Yeah. You know. Generalists, and um, but but as you said, but Emily, believers. I think yeah. belief is just the the, the strongest yeah, thing. Yeah, common ground. Yeah. I think that's one approach as well. And then there's the industrial filmmaking where believing is not necessarily as integral to the process. Well, then it becomes certain, a financial but then, thing. Exactly, yeah. Which is not... But, but so I think, I even think, the, I think the, what you call the industrial films, like, you know, the, on the mass budget scale, I think the, the, of those films that are excellent and mm -hmm. have a high quality, there is, there is a person yeah. that deeply believes and, and yep. there's some unifying yep. concept. Yeah. For sure. Um, absolutely. For sure. Yeah. Actually, without uh, a, a strong producer, film, films do not succeed. They don't get That's made. Yeah. Yeah. They don't get made. They don't get funded. They don't attract Ta talent. Um, we're the, as I say, the first one. Yeah. So we have the script, and I have to figure out how to pull pull it all together and find yeah. that talent in most cases. And it's just, you know, it's just. But for example, forward. yesterday evening we got the news that um, producer in in my office. There's, there's only two of us, but she she just got the go ahead last night from the, the the british film institute said they'll come on board this film that she's been trying she's been oh, working congrats. really mm -hmm. hard to get together for ages and they and i think the reason they said was that clearly you've pushed it forward so far <laughs> right. you can't stop we can't take your it phone was, calls exactly, anymore <laughs> you, have to, you have to push a yeah. film into production yeah we can't stand to see you Tastefully <laughs> aggressive is what I like yeah. to say. Tastefully so, aggressive. Mm. 